Previously on Phoenix Wright's Spirit of Justice. Barrel up! Seize the witch before he makes a run for it! I'm on energy! Come here! No, dude! Why is there so much happening to me? Oh, get away from me, you weird white-haired freak! Come on! Don't be difficult, Larry! You come here now! Oh my god! What the hell? Why are your skin so pale, dude? I don't get sun very often, motherfucker! Now get out of here! Now, bagel cuffs! Blah. Ah! I can't break out of these bagels! What are these made of? They're not made of anything, they're just really stale. And now, back to channeling people! Hey! The Snicko B, back with some more Phoenix Wright Spirit of Justice. We last left off, we can play the first part of the Turnabout Time Traveler. And I'm gonna be moving on to Investigation Day 2. And so far, it's okay. It's I, I don't think it's great, but I don't think it's like dreadful either. I mean, like I said, I think the, the biggest draw and the best parts of this are the nostalgia factor for a lot of it. You know, for Maya being up there with Phoenix, going up against Edgeworth again. I guess some people might like having Larry back, you know, stuff like that. And and Ellen's like crazy shenanigans. Now I still believe it's gonna end up being the butler. I I kinda hope I'm wrong though. Uh, I would really like to be proven wrong because it just seems very obvious. Just the way the butler has seemed to push back so hard in terms of like, you know, it's gotta be Ellen. She clearly did it. It's not anyone else. Stop looking around at other people. <laughs> also did find it unusual, honestly, that he would come up there and tell them that he was responsible for what happened with the, the cover up, you know? Like, why would he do that? Like, couldn't he just have let it be? And they all would have just been banging their heads trying to figure out what the fuck was going on. Like, you really didn't need to say anything, right? We are all like, look, like, it's gotta be time travel, and just stay up there, just let them stay up there and talk themselves into it. You're like, it, my god, I guess time travel really does exist. You've proven it to me today, Phoenix, with your amazing scientific capabilities. So I really don't know why I even came up and said, hey guys, guess what? Let me tell you about some illegal shit I did. I think I saw a few of you in the comments said that that was a brilliant move, is, and I'm, I feel like I'm, maybe I'm missing something here. What, Where's the genius in it? I, am I missing it? What, what? What is it? I suppose it could be something that is yet to be revealed and like maybe it'll make more sense later on. But right now I'm just kind of like, I didn't see any reason for him to do that. But anyway, we're on to the second day of the investigation. And uh, I imagine we're gonna be learning a bit more probably about Soren's sist sister. I think, like, like I said before, I believe he's probably looking at time travel because he's trying to prevent find a way to go back in time and prevent his sister's death. That's what I think. But anyway, let's get started, guys. Am I? Oh. Oh, damn it. I don't know why it does that sometimes. Sometimes when I'm like, if I have this thing open for a bit and I minimize it, uh, the window that I, I can see the 3DS on, uh, sometimes it freezes after a bit. Fortunately, it doesn't really do that when I'm actually like, actively playing on it. But if I'm like, sometimes I, I get the, the window ready and I'm like, just to get it ready ahead of time, and in the meantime, I'm like watching something on YouTube. All right, so September tw September twenty second, one forty eight p.m. Right in the ASA. Ah! I feel like I'm missing out on so much important plot shit. Don't worry, you're, you're really not. So the whole time traveling thing was just a ruse put on by the guests at the reception. I know who would have thought it. Looks like it. I knew there had to be some kind of trick to it. It just would have been stupid otherwise. Wow, two wedding receptions. Can you imagine? I wonder how much that must have cost them. I have no idea. Well, I guess they could just reuse the shit they already done before. Although, I guess, I mean, if they already had food at the first one, yeah, you'd have to get another cake, right? But if you have to ask, you're not rich enough to get to want to know. Still, got the money. It's a pretty good way to cover things up, if you ask me. You got that right. I would have been completely full. Hi, I'm back. Okay, Athena, Maya's back. You can go back to being tortured by Trucy again. No, that's right. Ah! I'm still with it. No, you're not. Give it up. Hey, Maya, are you all set to go? Yep, ready when you are. So, what should we start with? Ah, huh. we'll start with reviewing what we learned at the, at the trial. We all thought was time travel was really nice performance put on by the Sprockets. But other than that, it seems that. What Ellen told us is actually all true. So what really matters right now is the identity of the mystery person Ellen said she saw while she was being attacked. Yes, that fucking shady figure we see in every game. Who could it be? <laughs> Who is that guy? I've been trying to figure that out for the past seven games. So who is this mystery person? That's why I just fucking said it there. That's the million dollar question, I'm afraid. Well, if you want to clear Ellen any suspicion, 
figure out who they are is key. I think I'll take toilets for 200 instead, Mr. Wright. Well, at least there were only so many people on that airship that night. We know that who the mastermind of the whole cover-up plot was, too, so that's good. You mean the group, Soren Spocket, right? Exactly. You mean I was thinking they could help us out. Uh... So then what am I doing here? <laughs> what the hell? What am I doing here, dude? I've been asking that since the start of this fucking case. I'm a very busy man, you know, all right? Very busy sucking dick for drugs. Well, all the other people involved are Soren family members. So I thought I'd better stop by interviewing you. Even if I probably shouldn't trust a word out of your mouth. <laughs> oh man, dude, you just never learn, do you, Nick? I have a really tight schedule, but, ah, oh, heck, what a friend's for, right, dude? Okay, pal, go ahead, ask me anything. Um, do you, you do remember it was you who came to me for help in the first place, right? Of course I don't. You're expecting way too much out of me, Nick. I want to go over exactly what happened when before I step outside this office again. Since you were there, Larry, do you think you can help me get it all straight in my head? No, I'm just going to confuse you more. That's what I thought. Huh. If a god, a god. It's just so hard to be fucking useful in these games. Okay, so the first reception was held at 7 p.m. on the day of the incident. Then the pterodactyl came out, dude! No! God! No, not the pterodactyl. He comes later. Oh, yeah, that's right. But it definitely happens, all right? That was real. That was a real-life mother flipping pterodactyl, bro! And then the guards, like, fucking came to me. That's, just, that's the ones you try to crash, right? Huh? Oh, yeah, that's right. I guess I didn't do that. And then they locked me up in a cabin. It was off, I tell you. How the fuck did you even get out of there? Broke the fuck down with my awesome artistic bit capabilities. That doesn't make any sense, Larry. It doesn't have to, dude. I'm Larry, man. Nothing makes sense when, I, when I'm involved with anything. Too bad we're not here to focus on you, Larry. The incident occurred after this first reception at around 10 p.m. Ah! Hello was attacked in the reception hall by Gloomsbury in his massive left hand. <laughs> I know that's just foreshortening, but seriously, it's actually not. It's just his really massive hand. <laughs> he forced her out onto the Vista deck. I was just about to kill her. But Ellie fought back and ended up killing old Gloomsbury instead. Eat shit, asswipe. To cover it up, the family quickly threw together a second reception. That's what Edgy was claiming anyway. Mm. But I know my Ellie didn't do it. I've been here for all of five minutes, so, you know, that's enough for me. Key point here is the mystery personnel that said she saw strike Gloomsbury just before she passed out. Did you see anybody, anybody suspicious skulking around that day? Nope, just me! <laughs> Not a soul! Because I was locked up in a cabin at the time, dude! But you managed to escape and sneak back into the reception hall. That's when you switched the lantern in the event hall with the lantern in the hold, right? Did you see anybody then? Nope! Place was completely deserted. I was just standing there making my weird face like this the whole time. I guess because that Pierce Butler guy had everybody gathered together somewhere. That makes sense. He was going over the cover up plan with them. So clearly the murder had already happened by the time Larry got out. Must have gotten everything ready fast. And had the second reception soon after that. Then after the second reception, I only went to the clean up the reception hall. And as luck would have it, that's what she found the dead body of the lady that I brought up. What are the odds of that? I tried to do something nice for Ellie out of good as my heart. And this happened. God, I really am a piece of shit. Oh, God, I'm glad you finally realized it. Huh? I still don't know exactly what happened during the actual murder itself. Just have to look into it. Along with the identity of that mystery person. Am I coming to, right? Please, God, no. So while the murder was taking place, you were locked up in a cabin. Did you see anything unusual while you were there? In the cabin? Let's see. Oh, that's right. Pterodactyl. Well, where's that? <laughs> where's that? There's Clavier and Dactyl flying through the sky. That was pretty unusual. Hello, as stupid. I see you. Oh my God! What the hell? What the hell is it? This crack, dude. All right. The drawing of that pterodactyl you saw. What's with all the air quotes? I really didn't see it. I swear. Larry, time travel didn't ever actually happen. Which means you couldn't have seen a real pterodactyl fly through the sky. <laughs> oh yeah! Are you telling the I have a super popular picture book out there with apparently a photographic memory? No, I'm sure that you saw something else and mistook that for a flying reptile. Nick! Made me tell my own eyes! I'm not even sure what I saw. 
Good. Promise took her for something else. Hopefully I'll figure it out when we investigate. Either way, you have no idea what actually happened in the real scene of the murder. It's right! I can say that with every with every confidence! Oh wow! Sick of the time! I got I got more women to harass! I better go! I have a book signing to get to! A book signing? Who's book? Who's he think? It's mine, of course! It's all Laurice Dunham book signing! Oh by the way, you guys told me the the uh Laurice Dunham is actually a pun in itself for Larry's pseudonym. Ah, oh, that's a good one. But you went around and begged a bunch of bookstores to let you do one. Who the fuck told you that? Of, co of course not. Who the ones come around to beg me? So I guess right. <laughs> anyway, I have to go. Uh, I'll send you 10 copies of my new book that just got released the other day, all right? Just gotta be, you just got to pay me $10,000. Ted, that's very generous of you. What are you talking about? I'm going to send you the bill too, of course. Just throw him down his office expenses or something. Well, see you later, dude. Oh, God, please. Please don't show up anymore. Wait, Larry, we don't need... Nah, no, he's gone. Wait, why am I trying to stop him? I'll take a copy, boss, so we make sure it's signed. You don't want it. You really do not want it, all right? It literally smells like asshole because it's been touched by Larry. You get it? Don't you get it, Athena? Oh, boy. Just not going to like this office expense. Daddy, what is this stuff? I don't know. Just rip the pages out and use it as wallpaper. I don't fucking care. There goes our first lead. What do you want to tackle next, Nick? Right. You should really hit the streets now, huh? Hit the streets. Phoenix on the street. How about we go see Ellen? I'm sure she'll do some more hilarious stuff for us. Sounds good, boss. But I can cheer her up. Thought you were going to help Trixie with her magic show again today, Athena. Come on, go back to being a useless side character. Are you supposed to go meet her right now, about now? She said she was going to practice her new trick on you, if I recall. She said she was about 99% sure you might die from this. On me? Really? This show is an important source of income for our agency, you know. Your dead lifeless body is going to be used good for something like that. You can leave the case to us. You go ahead and run along now. <laughs> but boss, please! I'm going to go there. Get out of here! No! I was useful in the last DLC case! Nobody remembers that anymore! But it was the best case for the last game! I know, but go away! I don't want to die! By the way, I had some of you guys, I saw a few people in the comments who were like, like, Nico just doesn't like this because it's not related to an overarching story arc. No, no. I, I even said before, the last game, my favorite case of that game was the DLC case. That wasn't related to any overarching story. It was just fucking good. And this one's just not as good so far, in my opinion. Again, just my opinion. It isn't terrible. It's just, just kind of... Yeah. Better get going too, Maya. But who knows, maybe at the end I'll just blow my goddamn brain off and I'll forget everything else. I'll be like, what the? Larry was in this case, I don't remember that. All I remember is awesome. Okay, Nick. Holy shit, calm down. Sorry. It's getting so worked up. Let's go see our goofy friend. She's gonna cook us up. Steaming pile of salt. I think we got plenty of that already. Ah! <laughs> oh, I see what you. I see what you did there. Shut up, Miles. September twenty second. This is center for this room. Spick and span. Must get clean. Must get clean. Oh, my poor sweet son. I wonder how he's getting along without me. Hello, Ellen. <laughs> get the fry pan out underneath your bloomers. Oh, Mr. Wright, what's going to happen to the, with the trial? Do you think? Well, first and foremost, we have to hurry up and find this mystery person you saw just before you passed out. Do you think that person could be the real killer? It's quite possible. If we can prove that, we can clear you of all charges. Actually, would you happen to know where Soren is right now? He's usually busy with meetings all afternoon, but he should be home by evening. Mm -hmm. Oh, now you're doing underpants, okay. You better go have a chat with him later then. I might be intrigued at a view of someone's under underwear. Wait, those are my underwear! How'd you get those? Mr. Wright, don't tell me! You suspect my sweet son? Well, he is the one who masterminded the second reception after the time skip. So I thought he might be able to tell us something. <laughs> How could you, Mr. Wright? <laughs> That's my favorite one of hers. This is so random. Did I, did I, smacking her ladle and pan together. Like, I don't know even what this is supposed to be. Like, has anyone ever done this? This is something like a little kid would do. Like, just smacking the pan and the ladle together. 
Can't possibly think my sword would never kill anyone! Alright, alright, God, just go down! Stop it! No, none of you are accusing my sword! Please, not accusing anybody! So please put the pan and the ladle down, alright? Really? Cross my heart! You know, also find evidence. <laughs> tell, tell me they did do it. Which case, yeah. So for now, would you mind if I ask you a few more things about the case? <laughs> Better be careful not to provoke her. Which is gonna... <laughs> okay, that's, uh, that's just fucking impossible, alright? She is very unstable. She told me about... about, about Soren. There's nothing to tell. He's squeaky clean, like me! My pure white dress! Uh, alright, okay. Should avoid the topic of Soren right now. Let's talk about something else then. Fine, but you won't hear a peep out of me about Soren. We're pulling teeth. Okay, that was a useless option. Persnickety, Persnickety. Just tell me about Persnickety then. Pierce came to the Sprocket Manor about a year ago. Oh, okay. His family butler is now in charge of everything in the household. Only a year ago. She has some kind of special connection with the family. I'm just a maid, so I'm not privy to such things, I'm afraid. Okay, so he's a relative newcomer. Might be been Soren's order. Pierce is the one who coordinated the whole thing. With his weird shoulder get gizmo. He's the one who really orchestrated the grand time travel farce. Must have quite a bit of authority in that family. But no matter how good he is at his job. How could anybody gain that influence in a single year? I really don't know. I mean, he is an excellent butler. Wouldn't that explain it? Hmm. Is it really as simple as that? No. What you thought was time travel was really just a cover-up carried out by your in-laws. Pierce said Sora was the one who ordered that whole thing. I still can't believe it. If the second reception was fake. Sora would never use time travel for something like that. He's a very serious about his time machine research, you know. Or there's a reason he's researching time machines, actually. Something about something he wishes he could change. But isn't the whole idea of traveling back in time itself a little fantastic? I don't think so. After all, Soren said real time travelers do exist. Really now? I think he knows someone who actually traveled through time. That's right. I've seen it personally, but Soren said as much. So I believe it. Somebody who actually traveled through time, huh? It's pretty hard to believe. Thank you, Ellen. Going out to do your investigation now, aren't you? Yes, that's right. Please make sure you don't cause Soren any trouble, okay? I'm afraid I can't promise you that. Uh oh. <laughs> ah, what? <laughs> ah, I knew I was gonna set her off. <laughs> please, whatever you do, please don't set my poor Soren any further. I'm begging you. Shut up! I'm trying to save you, stupid. I'm doing my best not to cause any unnecessary trouble. Oh, I can bear so it ever came under suspicion. <laughs> uh, I'd rather be more guilty myself! Ah! Yikes! Ah! How is that pen not getting full? Ellen, please don't work yourself up like this. Don't want Sword to worry, do you? Oh, here we go again. And powder my nose. Squeeze that waist tight. N no, you're right. Floodwaters recede once more. Gotta get dehydrated doing that. So what do we do now, Nick? Well, Alan says Soren is usually in meetings until the evening, so... It's the day of our house call until then. Why don't we go, and go to the mooring dock and figure out what our next move from there. Roger, Nick! Alright. Go to the mooring dock. Okay, man, I can figure out that that sign is over there is the pterodactyl. September 22nd, Sprocket Park, Mooring Dock! So, where should we start? Hmm, let's see. Are there any places we haven't examined yet? We already investigated the reception hall in Sprocket Manor. I know. We haven't looked at this vis at the Vista deck or the hold yet. <laughs> You're right! So I got some pretty important places left to examine, don't we? The Vista deck is the actual scene of the murder, right? How the hell did we not examine that the first day we were here? Seriously. You were like, oh, I can see through the window. That's good enough. The lantern with the body and it was stored in the hold. I think there's a good chance we'll find some important clues in those locations. Do we know how to get to the hold? 
Good question. There's a little of that diagram of the airship in this pamphlet. I'll just click the option in my locations menu. Maya. There it is. It's the glowing red spot there. Okay, good. But more importantly, where is the door to launch pad one? What are we waiting for? Let's go. The chick's never going to die, is it? Nope. Never going to die. Oh, there's the bag of moves. September 22nd, Flying Chapel. Oh, there's the flowers, too. This is the hold. This is where Pierce orchestrated the whole cover-up operation. Bring her over this place with a fine-tooth comb. Hey, Nick. Were we supposed to need a key card to get in here? Oh, you're right. I wonder why it was unlocked. Uh, how's it going, Mr. Wright? Uh, oh, hey, it's me. Emma, what are you doing here? Just a little independent investigating, for my own sake. Gotta keep them on sharp. Ah, so the door security system was turned off for the police investigation. We'd like to investigate the hold ourselves. Would that be all right? Yeah, sure. Police just finished their examination anyway. Thanks. Let's take a quick look around then. Oh, right. You should know that the floor doubles as a huge lift. You can use that lever way back there to raise it up to the Vista deck. Oh. We suspected already, but didn't find anything of particular interest, it seems. If you do go up to the Vista deck with the lift, be careful not to fall off. Got it. Thanks. That goes double for you, Maya, you clumsy sod. Yes, ma'am. Well, let's get this show on the road. Wait, isn't Maya older than you are, Emma? Yeah, 27, she's 28. Just, just, uh, one year shy. Oh, wait, have I shown you my badge yet? I wonder if I'd done that already. Something I can do with help you with that? Actually, I was hoping it would help. Okay, never mind. Nothing funny to say, Emma. God damn it. Oh, what the hell? Just give me a snack, who, though? It's not going to do much for you here, I'm afraid. That's too bad. Oh, I don't look so glum. You can have. You have to have a cute pause about it. When you take a break with something sweet, I can recommend snack ooze myself. I'll try some. Yay! Looks like a looking like a turd to me. Oh no thanks. Where's the offer though? So yourself. Don't know what you're missing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look very happy about it though. No, they're the great. They're great. It's like I've been trying to quit them for the past couple of games. There's something so adorable about sad Emma eating snackoos. Like, oh, there's fucking flowers. These are the flowers we saw in Larry's photo. That also make them look like little gears. Perfect flower for the Sprague family, huh? Maybe they're going to shower the couple with the petals. You mean kind of like how people throw rice or confetti? Yeah, look at that. Only these were found at the scene of a murder instead. Oh, well, ain't life screwy. It's supposed to be the dishes and glasses they use for the receptions. Very fancy. But we'd be in big trouble if we broke any of them. Maya. Yeah. Oh, I want to see Nick. I want to see Nick. You young lady, stay far, far away from them. Nick! <laughs> Big face, think I'm going to break them, don't you? Just so say your rap sheet for breaking things doesn't help your case. You killed Radio Chan. Got some gears in the back. It's the a a airship's engine. It's pretty impressive. And it's all rhythmic, like a heartbeat. It's the literal heart of the flying chapel. Look at all those huge gears spinning around and 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 around. You spin me right round, spin right right round, do down down down. Oh, I think I'm starting to get dizzy. Yeah, me too. Oh God, you guys are about to get dizzy. Oh, why does this keep happening? Is it a cake? Almost looks 2D. Oh, it's a cake, Nick. A cake. So big, wouldn't miss one little piece, would they? Is that in that in the mood for a mouthful of styrofoam? Sure, knock yourself out. You stop real? That's your fool me. No, oh, that's not gonna stop me. I'm not gonna... <laughs> so ready to have some of that? I'm really craving cake now. Come on, Nick, let's go get some. After the trial was over. No, I want it now. <laughs> Hi there, Pegamo. So there are two male Pega Bowl lanterns in the reception hall. That must mean. And these two are the female Pega Cow lanterns. They got their sexes mixed up when he replaced the one in the reception hall, huh? Can you see the horns? The difference is pretty glaring, you ask me. Yet he managed not to not to notice. Another way Larry managed to fuck up on a daily basis. That's what makes Larry Larry. 
Larry being Larry is why I've seen more than my fair share of trouble for a lifetime. Am I being paid for this case? Oh, Mr. Wright! You know that lantern the victim was found inside of the reception hall? Just about to go piece it back together so the police can examine it. Oh, okay. Well, stop by for a look, too, once you're done fixing it. There's a little bell in the back, too. Ding dong! What's that? Ring bell? Shut up, Maya! According to the pamphlet, it's used on the Vista deck during wedding ceremonies to bless the newlyweds. Guess they disassemble and store it away here in the hold when it's not been used. Here comes an aeroplane! Ooh, look at that! It's an airplane! Your Sorum built that one too. Hey, why don't we take it for a spin? Okay! Just a quick tour around the neighborhood! And who do you propose is going to pilot the wooden death trap? Me, of course! Who else? I've got superpowers, Nick! Don't worry, I've seen people fly airplanes on TV plenty of times! Um, I got pass! I got my old life ahead of me! Alright, I think that's everything in this room. Let's go up! Oh, look! There's a lever to the lift Emma told us about. Let's try going on up! I'll go flip the switch! I'm gonna do it! Here goes the next clue! Wait, I'm not even on it yet! Ah! Oh, hello! Oh, look at all the fucking giblets! <laughs> hey, Maya! Stop the left! Oh my god! Whoops, sorry! Got a little carried away! Never mind that! More over a little! Uh, okay! Is that blood? B blood? Let me see! Could it be Mr. Gloomsbury's blood? Well, this lift goes up to the Vista deck where the murder took place, so... I think that's the most logical conclusion. I thought the victim was clubbed to death and that there wasn't much blood. So he tells me I better take a picture of this. It's probably where he actually died then. Let's see that was found on the side of the lift in the hole. It's unknown whose blood it is. Should ask him about some more later. Oh yeah, you bring the lift back down now. See, I knew my little goof up was gonna help out. You got it, I'll go flip the switch again. Hey look, I can finally tell the video! That's great, Maya. It's fucking great. It's a little things in life, Nick. Done! I'm gonna find out some more about the blood stain. But for now, I guess we should go up to the Vista deck. Take a look around the actual crime scene for ourselves. You must be great from up there. I bet it'll be awesome. That's gonna make my butt tingle. You guys ever do that? You ever get a real butt tingle when you look off the edge of a really high place? I get it out the wazoo. That's also because I'm a little scared of heights, so, you know. My butt's like, ah! <laughs> it is, I think it's sort of that feeling like, you're, like your butt is like a hand and it's trying to reach out and grab something behind you so you don't fall. I mean, it would be if it wasn't the scene of a murder. Okay, to the Vista deck we go! Make sure you actually get on the lift this time, Nick. I know, I know, mate. Make sure you fucking wait for me this time, I got. Okay, let's so switch in again, and away we go! Woohoo! Wow, look at that gorgeous view. This is where Ellen was attacked. Scoom's bear was killed. Yeesh! One wrong step and it's gonna splat on the ground! Ha! Ah, take that, Nick! Now I'm the main character of the series! Ha ah, ha! My FA! A spear channeler! No! Ah, new series away! Should we go investigate the stuff that's a little closer to the edge? Well, I don't see much of anything over there. Police investigation didn't turn up any clues either, so. We don't need to? Oh, I get it! You're scared, aren't you, Nick? No! Not like Apollo! Not a pussy! Of course not! Come on, let's go back down and check, finish checking out the hole! For God's sake, Nick! Seriously, that's it? Why don't we even come up here then? Seriously, what the fuck was the point of that? We <laughs> okay, I guess we'll talk to Emma now. The incident. Any progress with your investigation? Nothing inclusive yet, I'm afraid. Almost everybody was involved with the cover-up. So it's hard to know who or what to believe. I know what you mean. 
must have some compelling evidence. I'm afraid it's going to be a tough trial for you. You're telling me? There's not much left time left, so I've got to make do and see what I can churn up. All right, so uh, show her the blood spot. Emma, about this blood stain. Does something about this strike you as odd? So odd about the victim's blood. It's not. It's not exactly. It's just something about it that bothers me. It's where it is. Hmm. So now that you mention it, I can't say I necessarily disagree with with, with you. Maybe let's talk about this some more with her. Okay, now I can choose your option. Come on. About this blood stain again! <laughs> I know, we are just talking about it. We had to finish our thought there. We had to go to the option! I think it's probably the victim's blood. The victim was clubbed to death, right? Yeah, but he could have been bleeding from his nose, or maybe he spat it out. I won't really know for sure until I look into this some more. I see. There's still something about it as bothers me, though. What? That's it? What the hell was it? What the hell was that pointless exchange? Am I missing something? Or maybe I, maybe I gotta wait a bit. Oh, no, it's a candlestick. Oh, huh? there's some fingerprints on this candelabra. Oh my god, of course they used the candlestick in the study on Colonel Mustard. Yeah, I just got done dusting that. I was able to pull a set of left hand prints. Do you know whose prints they are? Yes. The prints belong to the victim, Dumas Gloomsbury. Nick! <laughs> ah, what, Maya? Just figured out something amazing! You did? Get this. The fingerprints on the clan blob were from his left hand. And Mr. Doom and Gloom must have been left handed! What do you think of that? Do I have a makings of a great detective or what? Oh, yes. Your deductive reasoning skills are near encyclopedic. Hey, you're pretty good, Maya. Looked into it myself, and sure enough, the victim really was left-handed. Really? I got it right? Awesome! Uh, good for you, Maya. Good for you! That's all you gotta say! The face! I, uh, think you did a great job, Maya! Way to go! This one can never have too much info. Ah, you're talking! <laughs> but, come to think of it, this candle opera isn't in the photo Larry took of the hold, is it? Picture was taken when they were getting ready for the first reception, right? Candle lover must have been brought in sometime after that, then. Huh. Oh, still possible it has something to do with the incident, though. Better add it to the evidence file, just in case. Candle opera from the hole bearing fingerprints from Gloomberry's left hand, which is his dominant hand. Oh, by the way, Mr. Wright. You can have this fingerprint powder if you like. Give this to us? Of course! I can't let you go go this whole case without a fingerprint minigame! Oh, good! Sure, I have four other sets. <laughs> Th thanks. Well, there's something more to the candelabra, but keep my finger on it. Oh, I got you. Okay. It's on her talk thing now. Emma, check out this candelabra a little more. A little more? What are you? Oops! What happened? I almost dropped the candelabra and the candle slipped off. Well, can't be too careful with that. <laughs> Fortunately, that's going to be a massive, important clue, a Emma. Your carelessness helped us. Might be important evidence. Wait a minute! My god! Now what? Yeah, the number of, like, like, whoops, I did this thing, and I came across this in really incredibly important piece of evidence. It's happened a fucking lot in this case. I remember that just happens a lot in general for Phoenix Wright cases. One of the pins that holds the candelabra is broken. What? There's definitely something fishy about this candelabra. There is. Makes you say that. Call a forensic investigator's intuition. We already have dusted this for prints earlier. So let's test out with Luminol this time. Oh, Emma, she'd use every test she has as a, at the same time she could. Do wielding, baby! Just hang on, it's only take a sec. This turns up a new lead somehow. Oh, is she doing it, not me? Oh, how much? Find anything? Take a look at this, Mr. Wright. Blood! What's all this blood doing on there? So is that like the second thing he got hit with maybe? Meaning that he, he wasn't actually killed with the uh, the big heavy thing? Or maybe that was the first thing he hit it with? I, I don't know. Maybe somebody got hurt while they were setting up for the reception. Those pins are pretty sharp. That's a lot of blood, Emma. One of those pins is broken. It means that there was some force involved. Do you think maybe someone got stabbed? 
but nobody reported anything like that. There's quite a bit of blood. I don't know whose it is. I think they might shed some light on that. I probably should show it to Emma. Okay. Oh, whoa, go back. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, now we're. I was like, I was like, what the hell was that? <laughs> it seems so pointless before. Okay, I, I, did, I did have to unlock this bit. About this blood stain. What about it? Something that's been bothering me. Oh, uh, yeah? What's that? There's a huge blood stain on the crime scene left. And a bloodstained candelabra. That was only a guess, but I'm thinking maybe these two bloodstains are from two different people. They're all the same source. <laughs> Why would I say different sources? Seriously. I'm thinking maybe these two bloodstains are from the same source. Hmm. Because that is a possibility. Can we repair the two bloodstains? Do they take a lot of time? Are you kidding? Or underestimate the power of science! Done it at your feet. And the results are in. It didn't take long, now did it? Hmm. This is the blood from the lift and the candelabra from the same person. But we still don't know whose it is. Okay. So we're thinking maybe someone was injured. That was this. That wasn't uh, Gloomsbury. Oh. Well, the was clubbed to death, and there wasn't all that much blood. The blood on his hand? Was that... Could it be he accidentally cut himself? Is that... I can't tell... Is that blood from... The blood from the back of his head, or... Or what? But if... if this isn't Mr. Gloomsbury's blood. No, okay. Well, it's just a guess, but... What if Mr. Gloomsbury stabbed somebody in the... With the candelabra pin? That would explain both the huge blood stain on the left and the blood on the candelabra. Oh my goodness! That's true! That means there was somebody else present at the scene of the murder! Does, doesn't it? Just might substantiate all this statement about a third person. Come on, could you have this blood analyzed? Sure thing. Hmm. Mysterious blood stain on a candelabra with the victim's prints on it. This just might be the thing to back up Alan's memory of seeing a third person. Next up, the reception hall. Maybe we're taking a look around in there. Alright, we gotta look we gotta keep an eye out for anyone with like gloves or like something covering something else that seems out of place that could be out of place and they're hiding a big bloody gash or a bullet in the shoulder. Reception all the forensics team is in there investigating right now. Oh, they are. Yeah, we don't have much time to sit around. Let's go check out something else. Good idea. Go question some people. If she saw it. That's quite a few questions for that guy. Sounds good, Nick. Let's go, Team Maya. Off to some legwork, then. Yep. Oh, we did a Soren's house for starters. He's accompanying the police on their investigation here earlier, but... He's probably home by now. Great, thanks. Later, Emma. Peace out, home Dizzle. Let's go. Bump, 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 bump to the foyer. That card's still sitting on the floor. Zero twenty seconds. Sprocket Manor foyer. I still can't get around. Gorgeous Sprocket Manor is. Just don't touch anything. I'm gonna get the radio again. I wasn't going to. She was definitely going to. Um, I was told I'd guess. Uh, I suppose I could have a hiding a cut on Soren's hand for with the gloves there. There's a hole in the back side of it. Thank you for seeing us, Soren. We know you're busy. I'd like to ask you a few questions about the case. You wouldn't mind. Hey. Um, Soren. <laughs> You're Ellen's lawyer, right? Huh? Yes, that's right. Don't tell me he doesn't remember me. Will Ellen be found guilty? We're doing everything we can to prevent that. That's why we're here investigating. Can you please tell us what you know? <laughs> so, alright? Alright, fine. What's that pause all about? It's so dramatic about fucking everything. It was you who gave the order for that large-scale cover-up plan. Isn't that right? What large-scale cover-up? Don't play dumb with us, mister! You don't see wedding reception order to try and cover Mr. Gloomsbury murder! No one thought that. The power of the timekeeper you built. You traveled back in time. 
Ah, so that's why there were two receptions. Wait, do you seriously not know why the reception was held twice? Ah, I see, it was. So I'll have to delve deeper here. It was actually the butler doing his own thing. It's the cover-up scheme. That fake trip through time. You're not the one who was behind it all. Pierce Nickety stayed in court that you were the one who ordered it to be carried out. Pierce said that. I see. I leave him in charge of everything around me. So whatever he decides is, in essence, my decision too. So I take it that you didn't know anything about the cover-up. That's none of your business. But you were in the two wedding receptions in a row. And still, you claim to know nothing. Hmm. I have nothing more to say to you. Please leave. But, but sorry! Ah, ah, here we go again. Whee! Oh god, oh god, here it comes. Ah! Uh, how does he get to do that? Ah! ah! How does he get to curve like that? I'm aiming at you. Ah, uh, something written on this pa paper airplane. Let's see. Go away. It's like clearer than that, huh? <laughs> it's so funny he does that. Looks like especially uncooperative, but maybe I can grab his attention somehow. Still that one piece of evidence I don't know much about. It's worth a try. What the cog again? Look at this thing again. It always gets you going. What are you showing me that for? Mr. Sprocket! Can't read him at all. Even with an item as loaded as the sentiments as this. Hmm, okay. Something I'm still unsure about. The, uh, candelabra, maybe? Soren, have you ever seen this before? Th that's... Th that's... Oh! Oh! He's getting nervous now! He's clicking his- Oh! Oh! The lens coming! Coming all the way out of it! Soren, what is it? No, nothing. Why does his whole demeanor change all of a sudden? He's gone pale as a ghost, too. Ah, bleh! Sorry! Nick! Look at his stomach! He's bleeding! So, somebody help! Sorry's collapsed! Oh. Master Soren! Get him to the hospital quickly now! How the fuck, what? Why did it take so long now for you to bleed out? Poor Soren, that's my one serious wound. Hmm. Okay, so he got stabbed with it. Okay, what is it, Nick? Well, I show him the candelabra, his old demeanor changed. I was just thinking that maybe his injury is. Huh? What's this? It's Soren's notebook. He must have dropped it in the rush to get him to the hospital. Ooh, his notebook, huh? Wonder what's written in it. Don't, don't you? Come on, you know you want to get beak. I'm already reading it, Maya! So there's no book. What to do, what to- Re take a peek! Fuck you! I feel guilty snooping around somebody's personal notebook. Ah, who am I kidding? I don't care. Maybe we should take a little look-see. Whoa! It's filled with big words written in tiny letters! I guess he uses his notebook to write down his invention I ideas? Huh? What is it? Did you find something? Something juicy? Huh. After March 8th of last year, the content of this notebook changes dramatically. Like how? Well, ever since that day, Soren's been writing down every detail of his life. As in every. Maybe he decided to start keeping a diary? It's way too detailed to be an ordinary diary. Huh. If he was really compulsive, or maybe just plain forgetful. Maybe he's trying to write down every detail so he, when he quote unquote goes back in time, he can know exactly where to make a change to stop the death of his sister. Or maybe he wants to stop the death of the sister, but then everything else that comes after that tries to keep the same. I, I don't know. To keep the space time continuum from, from imploding. But is it really as simple as that? Like something happened on March 8th that made Soren change. Well, why don't you let me take a look at that? I'll tell you! How about you summon his dead sister? How about that? Hey! Maya! Let me go or you'll rip it! Ah! <laughs> God. No, look at you did! You dropped it! Ah! She just let me take a look! 
How is this my fault? Are we gonna stump onto something again now? Oh no, Nick! Ah! Fell into that pool of swords blood! Can't read a thing on these two pages now! Uh oh! You gotta get it now! Ah! This really is my fault after all. Just put it away carefully for now. Can't let anything else happen to it. Here. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Shit like that just pisses me off. Like, so, okay. So either one or two things are gonna happen. We just coincidentally did something that's gonna prevent us from discovering some massive reveal. Or we coincidentally did something that's gonna help us out again. And, and that wouldn't be that big a deal, but we've, this is like the third or fourth time we've done that already in this little investigation. It's just like, I just happened to do this thing and ooh, look at that! <laughs> It's like, okay, I feel like there's a limit to how many times we can just stumble into shit. Oh, hey, look, this thing's sticking out of the notebook. It's got a newspaper article. This is dead sister. Let's see, it's both a car accident sword sister died it. Cap it on, March 8th. Who would have thunk it? It's a day sword's notebook completely changed. Oh, wow. What else does it say? This is the driver at the time of the accident was. Dumas Gloomsbury. Oh, there you go. Ah. Uh... There's a, a motive for murder, right? For, for him, but so Soren was in the car too, and that he had sustained severe, severe injuries. Just like Pierce said, Soren completely changed after the accident. So Gloomsbury was driving the car when they got into that accident. That opens up the distinct possibility of uh, Soren holding a grudge against Gloomsbury. I think Soren could have. I don't know. It's not like I have any proof. We should talk to Pierce about this when we return to Soren's return Soren's notebook to him. It doesn't seem to be here right now. He's at the Flying Chapel. All right, back to the chapel then. September twenty second, Sprague Park, Morning Dock. Sure, Pierce is around here somewhere. Ah, uh, Mr. Wright and Miss Fay. Hello, Pierce. Just looking, just looking for you. I'm sorry for Master Sorin's sudden departure earlier. You have my sincerest apologies. It's totally understandable, really. But shouldn't you be at his side right now? It's fine. The other servants are with him, and I'm in constant contact with him. Mm hmm, with my little shoulder, Gizmo. Do not forget to give him his pain medication. Be sure to give it, keep him hydrated. Also, see to it that he's not up and about. He needs complete bed rest. So what happens when you're too rich for normal peasant phones? I must return to Master Sword now, but... Did you want something of me? Actually, here's Sword's notebook. He dropped it when he collapsed. Oh, Pierce doesn't notice the blood state! What the hell is this? Oh, thank you very much for this. I will see to it personally that Master Sword gets it back. Thank you. I trust you did not look inside. No, of course not! Ah -ha. Because it is filled with numerous patent-worthy ideas, you see. Look, you're busy, but would you mind if I asked you a few questions about the case? You're changing the subject! Yeah. See, that? it's significant. He keeps looking at the watch, and it's the exact same watch that's in this picture here. I think what we're going to find out is that... Uh, this guy was maybe in love with his sister. And he actually is the one that got revenge for her. Well, as I said, must be getting back to Master Sorin. So if you could make it quick, I would greatly appreciate it. Alright, make it as quick as I can. You did it, didn't you? <laughs> I'd like to ask you about the cover-up you tried to pull off, if you don't mind. I told you everything there is to tell in court already. Disposing of anything that may harm the Sprocket family's reputation is simply a part of my job. Sounds like a lovely job description. I have nothing more to say on the matter. We just keep checking this watch. I will say, I don't think it's wise to spend time on subjects that have already been discussed. Right. Okay. Let's just throw that one out the window. The accident! Pierce, she tell us more about this accident. Where did you find that? Now, did I not already tell you about that accident? You did. I 
You have even left out one crucial detail. The fact that Dumas Gloomsbury was driving the car at the time. Oh, did I not mention that? Suppose it simply did not come up then. Mr. Gloomsbury caused the accident. Why didn't the Sprocket family fire him? Wouldn't that usually be the natural consequence of such a huge mistake? Please do not misunderstand. Gloomsbury stayed on with the family. A Master Soin's request. What? That is the type of person Master Soin is. Perhaps it was the influence of Miss Selena's kind nature. She was such a sweet person that, even in her last moments, she thought of Master Sword. Not only does Sword not hold a grudge against Gloomsbury, he insisted on keeping him on. Now I really don't understand how that guy's mind works. What the dicks? Tell me how she died! So you were present for Selena Sprocket's last moments. Yes, by professional capacity. The accident happened on the way to a certain party. What kind of party was it? It was Miss Selena's engagement party. Bloomsbury's injuries were minor, but Miss Selena and Miss Master Sorens were critical. They were brought to the Sprocket family's regular hospital. Wow. Such a terrible thing happened on what was to be a day of celebration. Okay. So she was gonna get married. Thanks to the surgeon in charge, Master Soren pulled through. But Miss Selena. She. She. Last words Miss Selena said to me were Please help Soren. Ever since then, I've attended Master Soren and tried to help him in any way I can. I see. So his fiance must have been de devastated. Indeed. The shock of losing Miss Selena was so great. He quit being a surgeon. He was a surgeon? Wait, so the surgeon tried to save them both? Was he? Yes, he was Miss Selena's fiance. What a terrible tragedy! How awful! So where's the fi her fiance now? Good question. I wonder that sometimes myself. So Selena had a fiance. I'd like to find out more about him. I'll find him many times soon. It's not like that this guy is actually the fiancé, right? I mean, he's the one telling us about it, so I suppose he could lie, but it seems like something that would be easily cooperated by just talking to somebody else, right? <laughs> oh yeah, that was actually, that was uh, Soren, our butler. So, are we done here? I'm afraid I must be going. Would you please just tell me a little more about Soren? There's nothing more to tell. Can't seem to get any real answers out of him just by asking him real asking him questions. There is that piece of evidence I still don't know much about. Maybe he'll be able to tell me about it. Candelabra, candelabra, la 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 la, candelabra. Pierce, look what I can do! <laughs> Stab the shiver! Ah! <laughs> Have you ever seen this candelabra before? I, I, no, I don't know anything about it. Lies! Oh, we got three, baby. All right. I'm back, Tom. I reacted. Pierce must be trying to hide something from me. I have to break the psyche locks and find out what. It's psycho locks, Phoenix. Get the get it right. All right. Ah! Uh, tell me your secrets, steampunk butler man. Pierce's secret. Pierce. You're hiding something from me about this candelabra, aren't you? <laughs> this is one of the candelabras from the Flying Chapel, is it not? Is there something special about it? Actually, yes. Some blood on it, you see. The blood might belong to this person. Soren Sprocket! Soren has a rather nasty wound on his body, doesn't he? Yeah. Boom! Yes, Master Sora is indeed injured. Are any of the other people involved with this case injured? N no, not as far as I know. I see. 
So let me ask you this, Pierce. Do you suppose Soren could have been more directly involved than you're letting on? What in the world would make you think that? Oh, I've got my reasons. Mr. Gloomsbury's fingerprints were found on this candelabra stem. Which leads me to believe that Mr. Gloomsbury stabbed Soren with it. You can't possibly think Master Soren is the one responsible for the murder. I don't have any conclusive evidence of that at the moment. But I do think he had a motive. This proves that Soren had a motive to kill Mr. Gloomsbury. This article! Boom! Even though it was an accident, Mr. Gloomsbury was the main... Was the man responsible for taking Sword Sister away? Boom! Let us suppose that Gloomsbury did stab Stor Master Sword with the candelabra. Can you prove that had anything to do with this case? I think it, I think it probably will actually end up being that this guy was also the fiance, and he was also the and also the surgeon. Actually, do we do we mention that at some point, saying that he was a surgeon? No, maybe not. I've been stabbed at some other location, for some other reason. Sorry, but I can prove it was related to this case. Oh, really? So when stabbing Mr. Gloomsbury's death are definitely connected. Are they now? It's the piece of evidence that ties Soren's injury to Mr. Gloomsbury's murder! Take that! Lift bloodstain! The bloodstain was found on the side of the lift that goes between the hold and the vista deck. This blood matches the blood that's on the candelabra. Obtain the results straight from the police. So I can assure you this information is correct. This blood stay on the lift indicates that an important fact. It shows us that. Murder was in the reception hall. Soren was there the, during the crime. Gloomsbury wasn't there. Soren was there during the crime. Soren's blood is on the lift. Which can only mean one thing. He was there, wasn't he? Soren was at the scene of the crime. You are very astute, Mr. Wright. It appears I cannot hide this from you any longer. Very well. I will tell you everything. Boom! All you gotta do is blow up their locks. Okie dokie. Could you tell me about Soren's injury? Very well. This is what I heard directly from Master Sword himself. As you surmise, Master Sword was stabbed by Gloomsbury on the day of the murder. It happened after the first wedding reception. The happy couple was in the reception hall, when suddenly Gloomsbury appeared. He attacked Miss Ellen and tried to take her away. Master Sword went to stop him, and found himself in a struggle with Gloomsbury. That is when Master Sword was stabbed with the candelabra, he said. Now I'm wondering why exactly would L Gloomsbury attack Ellen in them? That's what I, I don't really get. What's his motive? Even though Master Sorum was badly injured, he went after Gloomsbury. So Sorum really was at the scene of the murder, wasn't he? Yes, that is correct. I mean, I guess we, he was saying he was jealous, right? But, I mean, he was a, a, of Ellen? That's what we were talking about before, but the fact that, like, like he still even has a job by this point after what he fucking did, like, why would he still feel so, like, compelled to... I don't know, it just doesn't seem like enough of a reason to want to kill Ellen or, or attack uh, uh, Soren either. However, by the time Master Soren arrived at the scene, whose bed had already been murdered. So Pierce is saying that Soren was at the crime scene, but they didn't have anything to do with the murder itself. Hmm. But still, why'd you try to keep such an important piece of information from me? I'm very sorry. Master Soren's injury and Gloomsbury's murder were not directly related, so I decided not to mention it, so it's not unnecessary to complicate the investigation. Now then, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I must really must go now. Please, excuse me. Thank you for your time. You should have just told us everything in the first place to save us all a lot of time. Yeah, but I guess it isn't that simple for him. He is the family butler, after all. He sure didn't make our job any easier, though, did he? Isn't that right, pterodactyl over there? But at least we learned something new. Soren was at the scene of the crime. That's true. One step forward is better than none. So, what next, Nick? Huh. Let's see. The forensic team might be done investigating the reception all by now. Let's go check it out. Sounds like a plan, Stan! Alright, let's go! Mr. Cow, get put back together. 
Oh, so we'll wipe the windows in the back. Server 22nd, Flying Chapel, Reception Hall. Looks like the police are done with their investigation in here. I wonder if it's okay for us to take a look around now. Uh, oh, hi, Mr. Oh, hi, Mr. Wright, it's me. Hi, Emma. Would it be alright if we investigate in this room now? Sure, the police are all done, so go for it. Oh, remember that broken lantern? I restored it to perfect perfection. I have to say, it is some of my best work. Heh. <laughs> so the repair job was a resounding success. Thanks, Emma. We'll take a good look at it, too. Well, I have to be getting back to the station. Try to mess up the crime scene if you can't help it. Well, be careful. I'll be seeing you. Don't touch my moo cow! I worked hard on him. I know, I know. Bye, Emma. Thank you. Well, should we get started? Mr. Moo Cow, do do do. Oh, there it is. Ha! <laughs> it all duct taped together. Here's a broken lantern, all patched up. And I do mean patched. It's the power of flex tape! I said this was some of her best works. So I know she had to put a lot of effort into it. I think she might have put the handles on backwards, though. Because they're different from how the other ones are. Pretty smashed up. Must have been a lot of work to piece it back together. Well, she gets an A for effort at any rate. Huh? This wheel handle on the back has some blood on it. Looks like somebody gripped it with a bloody hand. Maybe the blood got there when the killer was putting old Doom and Gloom body inside. You seeing anything else worth noting? Well. There's another one of those lanterns over there. So it might be a good idea to really compare the two later. Yeah. Yeah, she, she put it back in the wrong place. See, the other one over here has the white one on the inside. This is the unbroken Pegable lantern. And this is the one that Emma restored. Let's say they look exactly the same. Or are they made up? They're made up of the same parts. Wait a minute. What is it, Maya? Then there's something odd off about this pickable. Just. Just about everything about it looks off to me. Come on, Nick, get your head out of your ass! Not quite sure what it is, but some detail isn't quite right. Should we restore Lantern again? Hey, I know. It's this right. What? Where? Think about the restore Lantern's office. Shape of the horns, angle of the wings, the color of the handle wheel. Look, it's a wheel handle. It's a different color altogether. My God! And I got the inside and outside wheels handles switched around. Oh wow, you're right. There's blood on this handle. Is this someone gripped it with a bloody hand? Right. Which means that the blood got on the handle from inside the lantern. Do you think the blood got there when the killer was putting the body in the lantern? Huh. It's pretty hard to say at this point. No, because then there'd be blood on the outside wheel to open it. Oh, something here now. This is where the murder, where the murder weapon, the timekeeper, was displayed. It's in police custody now. Huh? What's this? Key? Did they really leave that behind? So that's the main about it. Good idea. Might be able to tell us something. Excuse me. I ask you a question? Oh, of course. What would you like to know? Did you know anything about this key? This key that starts at the timekeeper. Startup key? That's right. Oh! First startup of a love ceremony was so beautiful. The bride and groom each had a symbol of their love. When they put them together, no, how romantic it was. Uh, oh, okay. So if I put this together with the other thing, it makes something? For startup of love ceremony. Looks like it'll be that entail. Oh, uh, it's a ceremony in which the couple activated the timekeeper together for the first time. Oh, I see. Okay, so both use their, each of their parts. I suppose it was kind of like a cake-cutting ceremony. What are these symbols of their love you mentioned? 
Well, that's kind of a mystery secret, so I can't really say. I'm sorry. I better be getting back to my work. There's an order from above not to talk about it. Damn it. I think you stick the end of this key into like the center of this cog here. Looks like they both have like kind of triangle shape on the tip that could fit into there. Maybe, and then use that to unlock the timekeeper. Hey, that tablecloth is new. Just changed it since yesterday. Oh, you tell. Because the food stains that were there are now gone. Who knows, because it's, it's food related. It's another beautiful day outside, isn't it? Yep, if only it wasn't the scene of a murder, we could really enjoy it. True. Must be tough for the maze to have to work on a beautiful day like today. Oh, we don't mind. Whoa! I think you can hear me way over there. We don't think of it as simply cleaning. It's more like we're wiping away all of the sadness stuck to this airship. Wow! Talk about devoted. It's slightly depressing. We're checking everything over th this area. Excuse me! Bug machine ready use now? No, I'm afraid not. We only put dry ice in it when there's an actual reception. I see. That's too bad. Wants to blast me with a class smoke gun shake. No, oh, damn it. Hey, take a look at that door. Where it goes. Oh, yeah. It was hidden behind the uh, partition before. Yep. Open and see. Wait, please don't open that. It's the emergency escape hatch. At least directly outside. You'll fall to your death. Ah! 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 That was a close one out of my app. I'm already at the door. I'll say. Oh, that's it. Oh, I don't think we checked out everything relevant to this case. Uh, what are you two doing here? Wait, what are you doing here? Oh, what the hell? Soren, shouldn't be resting in bed. You're injured. How do you know about that? Um, never mind. My notebook. Have you seen my notebook? I can't find it anywhere. My notebook. I need my notebook. What's the matter with him? My, my notebook. I, I need, I, I have to have, I, I. Uh, Master Soren. Master Soren, I told you to stay in bed. My, 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 my notebook. Here, here you go. <gasps> oh, heh! <laughs> He's gonna notice the blood though, isn't he? Yes. This is it. Soren gets emotionally unstable without that notebook of his. <sighs> so he's calmed down now. Soren, I'm gonna talk to you for a minute. I cannot allow you to do that. What if his wound were to open up again? He needs rest. Ah! It's right. Now, if you will excuse us. Master Soren. Let's retire. All right. There they go. That's right. This really isn't any condition to be questioned. Well, let's go back to the agency and sort through what we've learned. Back to the back cave. Center 22nd, right in the agency. We're back. Anybody here? They ain't dead yet. Oh, hi, boss. Yeah, you know, you were with Trosi. Um. I guess you say that I'm... Uh, I'm taking a short break! But whatever about me? What about the investigation? Did you find out anything? Well, turns out the third personnel says she saw it at the crime scene. Might have been Soren Sprocket. What? what? Really? I always thought she's... He seems suspicious. Thing is, by the time Soren got to the Vista deck, the murder had already occurred, apparently. Way! Don't buy that. Not for a second! So cover up! Cover up, I tell you! That's certainly a possibility. A lawyer. It's only a possibility I have to pursue, but... But what? It's your job, right? So pursue the heck out of it! Do it! Kill them all! Just do it! Just do it! Yeah, but is that really what's best for Ellen? Sarah could be found guilty if the truth comes out tomorrow. But if we don't pursue this possibility, Ellen could be found guilty instead. Oh, man. Either way, it sure doesn't spell out happily ever after for the two of them. So what are you gonna do, Mr. Wright? I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm going to Disneyland! Oh wait, no, that's not right. I can't let this person get convicted. So I guess all I can really do is pursue the truth. Even ends up de devastating Ellen. Fuck her. What a tough call to make. 
Nah, it's alright. It's probably gonna have a happy ending where, uh, turns out it is the butler and Sora and her get back, get married and stuff, and... Just come on, right? I'm trying to crush our fucking souls in this DLC case. So there's always a chance, right? Maybe something will come up during the trial that will save their marriage. I hope so. I really do. Oh, my, let's go. Break the news to Ellen, you mean? Yep. Mr. Wright, please have me with you, please! I bet I can help you console Ellen through this terrible, this piece of bad news. Is Tristan going to show up? Athena, I appreciate the offer, but don't you have somewhere else to be? Do I? There she is. Athena, what are you doing here? Look at all over for you. Come on now. Let's go back to practicing. No, please. Why? No, wait. My body kept taking Irma. Boss, you got to help me. Our lawyer always gets our problems with Athena. But boss. If you bail on me one more time, Athena, I'm going to use a real blade on you. I'm going to cut you for real, bitch. Oh, my God. Ah! Mr. Wright, don't you realize your daughter's a psycho? Ah! Ah, uh, God, those crazy kids. I tell you what. Aren't you going to do anything? No, nah, I don't care. Sorry, Athena, but some somebody's got to do it. Bigger than me, though. But what about Apollo? He used to be the guinea pig. No! Hang in there, kiddo. Come on, Maya. Let's go eat some more plastic spaghetti. What? I mean, I mean we better get going. Seriously, are we ever gonna do anything with this fucking spaghetti? I wanna eat it! it looks so delicious! Da -da -da -da. It's the Maya theme, it is goofy like her. September 22nd, Center Center, visitor's room. Hello, Elon, get ready to flip the fuck out! But I think your hubby might have done it. How'd your investigation go, Mr. Wright? Or answer that. I need to ask you something. Don't, please don't freak out. I saw wrong with you when Mr. Gloomsbury attacked you in the reception hall. I, uh, I'm sorry I kept it from you. I was afraid that he'd come under suspicion if I told you. So I kept quiet about it. I'm really sorry. I see. That was probably something like that. Listen, Ellen. I had to make a very difficult decision based on what I found out. What kind of decision? I kind of feel like they needed maybe a few more, like, emotions for her even when she was just in her regular state here. Because it's kind of weird when she's, like, talking and just staying, like, perfectly still, not emoting at all, <laughs> until she goes into her crazy, crazy phase. This is very hard for me to say, but Soren did it. The mysterious person you saw at the scene of the crime. This was likely Soren. Here it goes. <laughs> In other words, in court tomorrow, I'm afraid I'll have to propose the possibility that Soren is the true culprit. <laughs> no! Soren is innocent. No! Let me see. If I don't try to pursue that, well, I thought you'd be found guilty. No! No! Ah! No! Please, Alan, stop it! Calm down! Ah! Soren just can't be found guilty! I much rather be found guilty instead! Ellen! Can't let yourself think like that, puppy face! But, 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 no! Marriage is for life, right? Do you really think you can run away from the truth and still be truly happy with him? <laughs> ah! If you're not married, so how can you possibly understand? Technically, neither are you! Sometimes you just gotta do whatever it takes to make things work! But, but, Nick, you talked to her. Hey! Don't just dump us all on me! Girl talk, right? Mr. Wright, I'm innocent and so is too. Please! Prove our innocence in court! I certainly do everything in my power. Except she doesn't lose control like this in court tomorrow. Oh, am I kidding? She's totally gonna do that. The end! To be continued! Okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the butler now. I'll be shocked if it really ends up being Soren after this sort of, like, setup here. It's like, I mean, it would definitely be a bit of a twist for me, because they're making it seem so much like, oh, it could definitely be Soren at this point in the story. But no, I think it's that uh, it's probably it's probably Pierce. I think he was in love with Soren's sister. And I also think there's a possibility that he was also the fiancé. Oh, actually, that... That make, makes sense. He's only been there for a year, right? And didn't, like, uh, his sister die 
like, was it a year ago? I, I don't know. They didn't really specify exactly, but that might be the reason why he's so recent and he's risen up so much, right? Because he was going to be the fiance to his sister, so they already trusted him. And he said, I'm going to probably take care of you. That That's what it is, right? He said, I'm going to take care of you, and uh, I'm betting he was the surgeon there before, right? I bet that's fucking it, guys. I got it. I fuck got it. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like and a favorite. And subscribe if you're not already. I'm going to pick your penguin. For the SLP, where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. I wonder if uh, the next episode will be a one or a two-parter for the final bit of the trial. Hmm. I don't know. Let me know if you guys if you guys know. Please let, uh, tell me because it's always good to kind of plan ahead. Of, like, how long is this going to be? Is this going to be like a, like a one-half hour or a three-hour? But anyway, guys, as always, till next time, stay classy.